Shakespeare's story, Kenneth MacMillan's choreography, and Prokofiev's music, the three going together really are the perfect blend. Ballet audiences who'd been used to fairies and, you know, dancers with wings on their back responded to what is actually a blood and guts, fantastically meaty story. And everyone can identify a little bit with thwarted love and falling for somebody who's deeply unsuitable in the eyes of the authorities or one's parents or one's family. You know, it strikes a chord. If you just listen to the music, the story is there. The fighting, the lovers, pas de deux, the ballroom. You don't have to think. You can sit and watch and enjoy. Romeo, for me, is puppy love. It's just pure, raw emotion, totally naive. Love totally engulfs his whole body, his life, everything about him. So let's have Romeo and friends. I think the relationship between Romeo, Mercutium, and Volio is really key and crucial in right. Macmillan's production. Mercutio is generally um, effervescent, exciting, a uh, bit mischievous. He's quite a dominant personality. Benvolio. Initially, Shakespeare has him as a bit of a peacemaker, and I think you can see that in the relationship between the three friends. But he very much looks up to his peers in Romeo Mercutio. <laughs> And we have our three harlots, which are our women. We kind of have fun through the town, dancing and getting involved with each other. The lead harlot thinks there could be something more with Romeo, but he knows it's not love. What he has with those girls is just pure fun. You really have a journey to go on. You start out this young, naive boy and then you're confronted with life choices in the end. Juliet has not yet fallen in love with anyone. Romeo is, is the first. She transforms from a young girl who hasn't thought for a moment about marriage, who is completely in, enjoying her childhood and her freedom, and then all of a sudden meeting Romeo, and that changes her life. Then, within course of days, she chooses her destiny. She's a willful child, you know, she's like a caged bird. And the parents have got her future mapped out. They have set their heart on her marrying somebody who was socially a little bit above them in the pecking order. Shakespeare perhaps created one of the first feminists in Juliet. She not only goes against her father's wishes, but she actually rejects all of societal strictures and the rules and the consensus with which society is modeled. Of course, there's the wonderful passion of the story of these two young lovers, but of course a major part of it is the fighting, the fighting between these two families, and everything was sort of really sorted out by the sword. Yes, excellent. We have, I think, some of the best Tibbots in the world in the Royal Ballet have a Tybalt come at you with a sword, with the look in the eye that they are genuinely going to stab you if you don't block. That, for me, then makes it real. Just pure adrenaline. You're driven by the pure adrenaline yeah. of it all. And it's so brilliantly crafted and constructed as a sword fight that it has every kind of emotion that you can think. So the fact that he attacks as much as I attack and defend is brilliant, I think. When you get to fight against someone who is obviously so experienced and knows what they're doing, you don't have to think about what's next. You genuinely are just thinking to kill the person. This production of Romeo, it's part of the Royal Ballet's heritage, and it will continue to for while the Royal Ballet exists. It seems very realistic, and it's so moving. 
Um, the journey it takes you on is just perfect, actually. Wonderfully designed. It's a wonderful score, it's wonderful choreography, and a superb visual excitement. You forget after a while that you're watching ballet, and you're just sort of caught up in that story of the two lovers and their families. Thank you.